Hey everyone, Santad here. Hopefully all of you are doing great. So, in the last day or so, I think I've made some really great and interesting steps uh, to answer a question that I think we in the Monster Hunter community have never really had a satisfying answer to before. And that is how do monsters scale? How do they get stronger? Uh, so specifically, I mean things like, you know, what's the difference between a low and high rank monster? Um, how much stronger are tempered monsters? So is this tempered Balahara going to be much stronger than a normal Balahara? And finally, what's the difference between investigation difficulty levels? So if I go to the investigation screen, um, so what are these, you know, five-star Kongala versus a four-star Kongala? Like, how much stronger is the five-star Kongala going to be? We're going to answer some other related questions as well. So if you go in the training room, for example, you might see you can change the training dummy's uh, stats from one star up to seven stars. And what do those things mean? And how does multiplayer affect monster scaling? So to find the answer to these questions, I've done sort of two different things. I've looked at the data mines for the game available on Kirinico. Uh, this is what I would call theory, so to speak. I'm just looking at what things should be like. And secondly, I did experiments. So I tested a lot of the different numbers on the training dummy and in actual hunts to see what's going on. Now I can show you the results of all of my testing in this video because then that would be hours and hours long, uh, but I will get through the main points and when I'm unsure about exactly what a number means. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, what are we trying to look at here? So when I look at scaling, I'm specifically going to talk in this video about two main things. One is going to be monster health, and two are going to be their status resistances. So monster health is really important because that affects how strong uh, flat damage skills are, what I would call flat damage skills. Uh, what I mean by that is, say that you have a skill that only ever does 500 damage in every hunt. Now, if a monster has 5,000 health and you do 500 damage to it with a single skill, that's taking out like 10% of its HP with a single skill, and that would be crazy, right? Now, if a monster had 50,000 HP, on the other hand, and you only lose 500 health, then that's only 1% of its HP gone. So this flat damage skill is much more important and much more impactful if a monster has very low health and much less impactful if they have high health. So the more health it has, the less damage relatively it takes from flat damage skills. And because of that, you need to look at monster health to figure out how strong these flat damage skills are. The second thing that we're going to look at here are going to be status and resistances. We'll do that at the end of this video, and we'll have a specific video on status later on. But status resistances are very important to figure out how strong stuff like poison, blast, paralysis, and sleep are going to be in your builds. Okay, so both of these things are incredibly, incredibly important for overall damage and to figure out which skills and playstyles are going to be the best. So, um, at base, uh, if you look at the data mines, every monster has sort of base stats. So things that they should have, but they never or very rarely have directly. So I can find this on Kirinika. You can look at the base health stats for different monsters. So Chattacabra, uh, the early game first monster you fight, has a base HP of 4,000. Guardian, Guardian Ebony Odo Garin has 5,000 HP at base, and Arkfeld has 5,200 HP at base. Now, you might notice that all three of these numbers are very, very similar. And, you know, Arkfeld has much more than, like, 20% HP. Arkfeld has more than a 20% HP increase over Chattacabra, especially if you compare like a high level 5 star Tempered Arkfeld versus the low rank Chattacabra. So there is more to this story, but these are the importance of the base values. Now, after the base values though, are that every quest traditionally applies some sort of modifier, okay? So every, so every single one of these quests are going to do something to their HP. Uh, so let's look at the optionals for now. So if we look at the low rank optional quest for the Chattacabra, so beware the Chattacabra, uh, this quest on the data mines has a 1.0 times HP modifier. So 1 times 4,000 is going to be 4,000. If we go up and look at the HR, the high rank Guardian Ethnic quest, which I believe is a 5 star quest. There we are, somewhere here. There we are. So Wide Whales. So in Wide Whales, the HP modifier is 3.0 times. So Guardian Ebony Odegarin in this quest is 3 times 5,000 health, or 15,000 health. And the high rank guard, uh, the high rank Arkveld quest, uh, which is somewhere over here, here it is, uh, the Chains of Life. So this quest has a 4.1 times modifier, 
over its 5,200 base HP, which means this quest, uh, you would fight a HR Arkveld with 21,320 HP. So the quest modifiers are what we have. Now what's cool and interesting in this game, and possibly for other games that haven't looked back at them yet, is that most, if not all, single monster quests have the same health modifier for the same quest rank, okay? So we said that um, Guardian Ebony Odegarin had a uh, 3.0 health modifier, uh, and Guardian Ebony Odegarin on high rank is this 5-star quest, right? Guardian Fulgur Anjanath uh, is also a 5-star quest and should also have the same 3.0 times multiplier. Uh, if you look through all of the quests, you'll find that they're always, always going to be the same thing. So uh, Guardian Rathalos will also have a 3 times multiplier, Guardian Doshigama will also have a 3 times multiplier, and so on. Meanwhile, for the one-star quests, they'll all have that one times health modifier, and so on and so forth. Now, roughly, but not exactly, every quest rank is a plus 0.5 times modifier. So, one-star quests have a multiplier of around 1. Uh, Two-star quests have a multiplier of around 1.5. Uh, three stars will be around 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and so on. It's not going to be exactly, uh, but it's a nice estimate. Uh, I think the exact amounts I'm going to show next. Uh, yes. So... At a 1-star quest, it's 1.0 times, and then 1.45, 1.8. There's a slight jump to 4-star quests, which are high rank, but it goes on to be around this 0.5 again and again until we have the highest normal quest ranking, which is 7 stars. We'll get to 8 stars later. Now, what's cool and interesting is that for the purposes of things like boons or statuses like a convert element, uh, surprisingly, uh, the training room uses these values as well. Uh, so they also follow this 1 to 7 star rating for the quests as well as the difficulty for the training dummy. Now, from this alone, that means we can actually answer a few of our initial questions. So, what's the difference between a low rank and high rank monster, and what's with the training room? They simply use the associated quest rank modifiers. So, going from a low rank to a high rank is going from a quest rank that's 3 or lower to a quest rank that's 4 or higher. There is no there is otherwise no big transition from 3-star to 4-star, other than this slightly increased uh, HP modifier, at least for the purposes of HP. Um, now, the next question we had to answer is, how much stronger are Tempered Monsters? So now, if you look at the game screen, for example, uh, Tempered Palahara is over here. It has an optional quest for that, and it is a 5-star quest. Um, normal Balahara is actually not a five-star quest. It is a four-star quest. Uh, there it is. The Desert Knows the Sea. It's a four-star quest. And if you look at the status and HP thresholds for Tempered Valahara, it simply acts like it's, it's a new quest level. It simply acts like it is a five-star quest instead of a four-star quest. So yeah, it's actually really simple and really straightforward. Now, of course, there are moves and whatever changes, and maybe the monster attacks faster if it's a Tempered Monster. But for the purposes of HP and status, uh, Tempered Monsters simply use their new quest rank, uh, and that's for basically all monsters. So, as an example, uh, HR Chattacabra is normally a 4-star monster. Tempered Chattacabra is a 5-star monster, so it scales as if it is one higher on that scale. Guardian Ebony is normally a 5-star monster, and now we treat it as a 6-star monster. And Arkfeld is normally a 7-star monster, and is treated as an 8-star monster. I think in all cases, they're simply treated as 1-star higher uh, for the purposes of the questing, and for this, therefore. But yeah, because of that, it becomes a really simple uh, situation. Now, I did say that the scale only worked so far until 7-stars, because that's what we see for the training room. And Tepid Arkfeld is an 8-star monster. We'll get to that in a second. But the next question is, uh, what about investigation difficulty? So if I go to my investigations, I have, again, a 4-star Kongala and a 5-star Kongala, or a 5-star Arkfield. What happens here? And now, uh, from testing, uh, from testing status and HP, it actually seems like they follow the exact same system. Every point of this investigation difficulty parameter above 3 increases quest rank by 1. What I mean by that? Well, if I go to the optionals again, so all of these are three-star monsters, right? In their sort of strength. So we have three pink stars next to, for instance, Jan Kutku, three next to La Labrina. If I go to my investigations, some have four, some have five, some may have one or two. If they have four stars, 
uh, they're basically treated as one quest rank higher. So what would normally be a four quest rank monster, the Kongala, because it has four stars, is now treated as a five star monster. This five star Kongala is two higher than three, so it becomes treated as a six star monster. So some examples, uh, high rank Guardian Ebony, which is normally a five rank monster, is going to be treated as a six rank monster if it's four stars, and be treated as a seven rank monster if it has five stars. And yeah, it actually seems that simple. It's simply an, an additive bonus to the quest rank and the quest rank effects for HP modifiers. Um, now, dropping the investigation difficulty does not seem to affect HP scaling from what I've tested. So a two-star uh, two star Guardian Ebony will have the same HP as a three-star Guardian Ebony. Okay? The damage numbers, I think, decrease, but the HP and status do not change. There seems to be a flat floor at whatever the normal monster would be at. Now, let's answer the question about what happens when they go above quest rank 7. So, for example, let's say we have a 5-star Tempered Arcfeld. Tempered Arcfeld is normally an 8-star monster, 8 rank monster, and if we have 4 or 5 difficulty stars, that's going to be 2 more. So it's effectively going to be a 10 rank monster, and our scale only went up to 7. So what happens there? Well, that's where I did some more testing. And so, looking at what their HP and status thresholds should be uh, for stuff like Convert Element, 8 star monsters seem to be between 4.55 and 4.8, which is again 0.5 higher than a 7 star monster. And 10 star monsters seem to have something between 5.1 and 5.9. So, again, it seems like every level increases the HP modifier by around 0.5 per level. Maybe a bit more than 0.5, but around 0.5 per level. Uh, which means that this is actually very consistent. Um, so what this does mean is an effective 10-star monster, like a difficulty 5 uh, Tempered Arc build, will have a HP modifier of around 5.5, and that means its overall health is going to be something like 30,000 or so. And this whole thing is incredibly, again, consistent. Now, what about multiplayer? So this seems to have what I would call a multiplier modifier modifier because it modifies the previous modifiers. So depending on how many hunters you have in your hunt, uh, you basically multiply the multiplier. Uh, so if you have, uh, if you're hunting solo, all the numbers I've been saying so far have been accurate. If you're fighting with one friend, it becomes a 1.6 times modifier to the modifier. So your HP is for the modified. Um, up to four players. Now with five players, uh, which I think you can do if you already have a support hunter for the quest and you invite four other friends, um, you have a 2.6 times multiplier. Uh, it's around plus 0.4 for every level, except for when you have two hunts, two hunters, so then it's a slightly larger difficulty increase. So basically what that means is if you're hunting with three other friends, the previous HP numbers, as I said, should be multiplied by 2.4. And if you're fighting with one other friend, all the numbers are multiplied by 1.6. Okay, now for status, the numbers are slightly different, but the methods are all the same. They're based simply on the monster's quest rank. Now, I will do a full video on status probably tomorrow, but a brief rundown is every monster has a bunch of tolerances, things you would call an initial increase and maximum tolerance, and whenever we pass the tolerance, the monster gets inflicted by a status. Now, the important thing I just want to say is that the tolerance increase and the max tolerance are affected by the scaling, but the initial tolerance is not. Uh, in brief, that's probably why in every hunt you do, the first amount is very, very easy to get, but in harder hunts, getting later hunts are much harder. The initial tolerance does not scale at all. And so the amount of the scaling is again dependent on the quest, and from testing, it seems to increase by 0 0.06 for every single quest. So a two-star quest has a 1.06 times modifier, then a 1.12 times modifier, and so on. Now, for ranks 1 through 7, I tested this like directly on different monsters and on the training dummy, and this was perfectly accurate for the first four uh, status procs of Poison. 100% accurate. Again, I'm not sure if this is really what's going on in the code, but for all like real purposes of a hunt, this should be perfectly accurate for the first seven monster levels. For the later effective monster levels, I'm less sure about them, and it does actually seem to break the trend. Uh, it, the monster's resistance seems to go much higher than you would expect once we get to like an effective 9-star or an effective 10-star monster. If, for example, you're fighting a tempered arc build with multiple difficulty stars. 
So yes, uh, the resistance is probably higher there. But for most purposes, it seems to not scale that much. Uh, this was actually surprising to me because to my understanding in previous games, the scaling is much uh, higher. So it's much harder to get later status props on harder ones, viz, on more difficult ones. Viz. But here, the scaling is very soft, which I think contributes to just how strong status is in this game. They seem to bust status significantly. But again, we'll get to that in the next video. Um, so just some examples though. So say a rank one Chattacabra has a hundred initial 90 increase and 370 maximum. Uh, if you fight it at a rank four quest, so high rank, uh, the modifier is 1.18. So the growth, the increase tolerance is 90 times 1.18 or 106. And the maximum is 370 times 1.18 or 407. Now these modifiers are modified by the multiplayer modifier modifier. <laughs> So if you have uh, two players in your hunt, we said the multiplayer modifier modifier was 1.6. So it's 1.18 times 1.6. Uh, so which does, in theory, weaken status for a multiplayer. In practice, we'll get to that in the next video. Uh, the main brief summary of this video, though, is that every monster has a base stat. And these base stats are modified by the quest rank, I think, almost entirely alone. Uh, things like high rank, tempered monsters, and investigation difficulty only seem to modify the quest rank. So high rank and tempered monsters already do in the quest description, and higher investigation difficulties simply add to the quest rank if they are for difficulty or higher. So that being said, I'd like to thank all of you for watching, as well as all of my Patreons, especially Hunter Finney, who is in my highest Patreon tier. Um, I'm actually really proud of this video because I think that I've never seen a satisfying answer to how PHP and status scales. Uh, so it's great to have finally cracked that. And this is all very relevant for damage and status. Status video will come next. Uh, I don't like to upload more than like once within 24 hour period. So if I get the status video done before 24 hours after this is posted, uh, that'll be on my Patreon. So if you want to see that early, uh, check that out. And yeah, again, Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.